I would like to introduce to you Kolbrun Friedrich Stottir. <laughs> the, the fact that this name is pretty easy to pronounce already points us to our tonight's topic, um, which are morphologically complex languages. And this is what uh, Kolbrun <coughs> will be talking about. Kolbrun is a junior lecturer at the Faculty of Iceland, and um, she is also co-author and project manager of the online language course Icelandic Online. Her um, connection with UCL, she will mention during her talk, so I won't say much about that. And um, the only other thing I wanted to say is that her research has focused focused on the acquisition of Icelandic as a second language and mainly the morpho morphological uh, morphology and how you can teach it. So very well, I thank you very much for speaking today and over to you all. Thank you. So, good afternoon everyone. So as Bill said, I'm Kolbrun Hreinsdóttir from the University of Iceland. Your pronunciation was great, Sibyl. Uh, and first of all, I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. So this afternoon, uh, I will be talking to you about how the web has provided a great opportunity for the teaching of a small and highly effective language like Icelandic. First, I'd like to outline some general information about the course Icelandic Online, and later I will go online to show you detailed examples of certain ideas or activities. So, Icelandic Online is the universities of Iceland's free online curriculum course in Iceland. Icelandic Online is student-centered, guided and sequenced with interactive and visual exercises, as I will show you later. The course is self-instructed and available in two proficiency levels. Uh, it offers integrated functions and grammar, as you will see also in a minute. And the course presents various oral and written texts followed by comprehension and accuracy exercises. So, the development of Icelandic Online started in 2000. Icelandic Online uh, available in two themes, as we call it Nature and Nature, and Menu Culture, was launched in 2004 for beginners. And Icelandic Online 2, year later 2005, for intermediate learners of Icelandic. In 2006, we launched Icelandic Online 1 and 2 Plus, an expand, and expanded and tutored version of Icelandic Online 1 and 2, serving as a business learning course at the University of Iceland. And this uh, this uh, expanded version is not free as the other courses are. There is a teacher and we charge for it. And in 2006 we also had a tracking system available which allows us to follow students learning pattern as they travel through the course. There we get some information concerning gender, uh, the, the students gender, age, education, where they are studying in the world. And we know from this tracking system that we have around uh, approximately 600 students daily uh, studying on Icelandic online. This is quite good. But uh, Icelandic Online is expanding fast. Uh, it is now, this, we, the courses uh, we have now, Icelandic Online 1 and 2, is now, uh, or Icelandic Online overall is now serving as models for further development. And we are currently working on three more web courses, as you can see here. 
I started on line 3 and 4 for intermediate to advanced learners of Icelandic, focusing on B1, B2 uh, proficiency level according to the dialogue uh, placement tests. And uh, another project in the pipeline at the moment is Icelandic on online for immigrants or foreign workers in Iceland. Survival Icelandic, as we call it, focusing them on students with no prior um, experience in foreign language learning. Icelandic online plays an essential role for certain programs at the University of Iceland now, serving as a prerequisite for all applicants to the BA program in the Department of Icelandic for foreign students at the University but also for students who wish to attend international summer courses in Icelandic at the university. And both courses 1 and 2, Icelandic 1 and 1 and 2, also are also uh, fundamentally two courses in Icelandic for, for students at the university. For example, for uh, Erasmus exchange students. So, just a few words of collaboration behind this project. Uh, Icelandic Online was developed on behalf of the University of uh, Iceland in collaboration with uh, lectures in Icelandic at five European universities. Uh, UCL is one of them. And Daisy was one of our co-workers. And other other universities, Humboldt University, uh, Lyon, the University of München, Copenhagen, and finally the University of Wisconsin Madison. And we, as you can see here, we have received funding from Iceland, the Nordic sources and the European sources, to to work on this project. Icelandic Online 1 and 2 are primarily aimed at uh, adults, as you can see there, university students in Iceland and abroad, and scholars and linguists who are interested in Icelandic. And some teachers are using this, uh, with this courses, for instance, Stacey and other student teachers and lecturers and in Europe. Okay, let's take a, uh, take a uh, closer look uh, at the description of the course before we move on to the Icelandic grammar. Icelandic online is rich in content. It's including 1,200 learning objects. It takes approximately 90 hours of study to complete the courses one and two, so there's a lot of work to be done for students. There are two proficiency levels, as, as I mentioned before. Uh, Icelandic Online offers immediate automatic feedback uh, on every single exercise. Together with both levels, students have uh, auxiliary resources, an aligned and scaffolded grammar database, as we will see later. But an Icelandic English dictionary, which is also aligned and scaffolded. Thus, both the grammar and the dictionary are adapted uh, to the beginner's level and the course material. I will show you some examples later. Okay. So now I want to draw your attention to Icelandic, which is uh, a highly inflected language, as I mentioned before. Inflected language is a top heavy on grammar. You don't get very far in a beginning learning course without having to explain why some words show up in so many different forms. Students will, for example, uh, experience 16 variants of the same of each noun. So let's take the, the noun course. This has to mean course in English. As you can see, there are 16 forms depending on the board's position and the kind of role it plays in a sentence. So 
so we can have hester, 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 hester. This is what our students are dealing with. We have three simple sentences there with with this noun "os." This is a "os." This is the first with the first sentence. There is one form of this noun. There are other noun "has." Of course, is it so? There is a different form of this noun. And here, our "has" form of the "os" is mine. Then we have uh, an example of the third one, and and we could we can have thirteen others. So of course this is of confusion for the woman. This is that's of this. <coughs> A little bit more about Icelandic grammar. Uh, before we move on, Icelandic has many many categories of inflected words, nouns, adjectives, pronouns, and the numerals one to four. The four cases. There are three genders of nouns, adjectives, most pronouns, and the numerals one to four are also defined in three genders. Verbs are conjugated according to tense, person, number, and voice. <coughs> so here we have a slide just to, just to give some example. We have uh, a part of a sentence, one white horse. And uh, the first one we can see a uh, numeral one, eight, white is Peter, of course, uh, again is Hester. And these all the words uh, are three in gender, number, and case, and they are all there in the nominative case, for instance, just to give you some insight. The second one, the same sentence in the accusative case, simple, eight, eight, and Hester. The third one, dated case singular, aim, feet, and the, the, third, the fourth one, the genitive case, so the genitive case of each word in the sentence, aim, feet, and So this is what our students uh, see very soon when they start to learn So Gender of nouns. This is something uh, I will pay special, special, pay special at, uh, attention to in my talk. In, in what way, and I can tell you in what way we introduce introduction of morphology to our students online, and I study online. So students in the course get the information that nouns in Iceland are either masculine, feminine, or neutral, as I mentioned before. The gender of a noun is grammatical, meaning that it relates to the form of a noun rather than its meaning. So as you can see on the slide here, guest is masculine. You can see here gestur, which is the, 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 the Icelandic word for guest. This is a masculine noun in Iceland. Soup or supa is a feminine noun in Iceland. And glass or glass in Iceland is neutral. But uh, it's fundamental for learners of Iceland to learn the gender of nouns before meaningful interaction or networking can take place with them. The, the endings of a noun often give the endings of a noun often give a clue about the gender of a noun. That is what we highlight in our course online in order to explain and simplify the grammar. This is what we are trying to do in revised and online. So as you can see here, here is gesture with this new art thing, uh, telling the student early that this that nouns with new art and thing are possible. Then they know the rest, most of the time a priest or prestur, if you also with you are anything, is masculine. And prestur, <coughs> this lovely word, prestur, you are anything, is also masculine. So this is the form students learn when they learn. And they are getting the clue from the form. 
the same is true for Sukha, the feminine one, they see the eight ending, telling them that it's feminine, and then they see the other panna, the pen, and to compete to tell that it's also feminine. And the neutral word without ending, so they have the formula very early, and this is what we what we try to do in a, in a sim and simplify everything in this complicated branch for students. So given the information and practice concerning the gender of nouns, the next step is to draw our students' attention to the dimension of noun. So this is just the table, but I don't think I will, I will go into it, but this is what they very early what they can we have to learn really. how how the, the this is the pattern for masculine nouns, feminine nouns, conventional pattern. And they, they have to learn by rote. We have adults there, they have to learn by rote. Many uh, grammatical figure items. So this is what they are we need to to simplify really. So this is our big challenge, how to present uh, the necessary morphology of plant in the beginner course. As I will demonstrate in a minute, the computer allows for interesting opportunities to present grammar in meaningful ways. Through the use of functions such as FLAS, as you will see later, and other programs, you can actually clarify and simplify complex grammar through visual and interactive presentations. So just a few words on this slide, we can see the relevant pedagogical approach in Icelandic only. And I will demonstrate uh, these points in a minute. Overall, we use the visual and interactive presentations for building up vocabulary and explaining grammar. <coughs> in that way, we appeal to different learning styles and present the language by using different formats, visual, interactive, text-based, based, etc. We use what we call mnemonic devices or guiding lights by introducing a, a complex of Technology, we need to provide students with guiding lights to help them remember and figure out the system that is complicated. We use focus on form in order to help learners to notice particular forms in a meaningful context, to pick out the structure to pay attention to. We will see it soon. So focus grammar is highlighted in the text. We scaffold grammatical information. The structure of Icelandic is preset gradually as to better serve the needs of beginning learners. And we offer aligned and scaffold the dictionary to build the knowledge of Icelandic vocabulary. Okay, so now we are going online. I think I need to take this in to Do you have any questions, maybe? So far. What, what do you mean by scaffolding? Oh, sorry, I meant yeah, cluster. Yeah. It's an interesting thing. Uh, yeah, I think the best way is to show it here. <laughs> scaffolding is like this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 In, in lesson three, so they know a lot now. This is, for, for first of all, I mean, the, the context is interesting. The text, the content is appealing to uh, adults. And we are focused there, this is a, a conversation here. Okay, the sound doesn't matter, but we need the student to focus on, we are focusing on grammar now, and we need to focus on certain uh, form. We are starting to, to, to tell them about the tension. We have the, the red uh, color here, 
they get some one one liner here telling them about telling them really what is happening in the in this sentence. And they get the information, first level information, where common case just like compositions do. So this is what they are they we are we are talking about the tension of a noun, this noun shunta, you might know it by now. And, and we are telling them that, that the verb in the sentence is covering the term case determinants. And they also get the information here that a preposition, e, is also covering. A preposition determines the case of the noun that follows it. And the yellow focus is <coughs> here we are focusing on the declined noun followed by the preposition here and followed by the verb. Okay, and we want to, they get this uh, here and here we are really demonstrating in a, in a visual way what is happening in the sentence. So here we have this plus exercise. Þetta er jakki, this is a jacket and the student, if the uh, attention is drawn to the ending. I, yeah. And this is what this detention is about, changing endings. I, by, here is the verb. Okay, we know from here that the verb is controlling the case. And I, I click here and then the verb comes in, changing the form of the noun. We understand. So this is what we do. We are, we are focusing on the noun here. Another one. Another word, blame, means forget. I forget my jacket. And when this sentence, when the word comes in, the noun is changing. The ending is changing. So this is our focus on form. Do we have the Some. sounds? Do we have the sounds? Yes, yes. Ég kaupi jakka. Ég gleymi jakka. And then they have the family now with certain ending. They know they, they've got knowledge about what will happen to this form or how it is declined that we are demonstrating in a, in a to simplify and clarify what is happening. Here is the the group the noun is undeclined. But when, when the, the this word is in the sentence with this one, the form changes. You keep a patient. You claim a patient. You to a Okay, the, this scaffolded uh, grammar. Here we had, okay, we were focusing on form, focusing on the input view. And then this is the two-leveled or, or scaffolded grammar. This is uh, like basic information of okay, what is happening in the, in the text. We have here the information, earlier verbs, common case, just the prepositions do. And then they click on the one-liner and get some grammar. And here they have in English some more information concerning this, this grammar topic in the text verbs, like prepositions, to turn on the case of the objects. So this is what I meant by scaffolding. Two levels, we wanted to have it like three, well, three levels, like more source on grammar in the third level, but we only have two now. So this is what uh, this was about, scaffolded grammar. Okay. And of course they get practice, many, many exercises working on this declension. 
maybe in the, in the end, I think, what is your, I would just maybe take one example of these, like, uh, guiding lights, how we use the web as a tool. Þetta er hátturinn minn. Þetta er peysa. Þetta er peysa mín. as much if you like. <laughs> okay, so then every exercise like this is followed up by other interactive exercises. So they should know now Kaisan me. So they can see that the, the L double L one L etc. is definitely a small language spoken by only 300,000 people or so, and this tool, the web, gives us an enormous opportunity to promote the language and reach out to all those who are enthusiastic in the language. 